Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today's video has been in the works for about six weeks now, though in some ways we've been thinking of making this video for over a year. It's certainly something that a lot of you guys have been asking for. I've received many emails on this topic, so let's do it. Let's talk about Samsung's questionable, even bad quality control for their flagship gaming monitors that is making it increasingly hard to recommend them. Our specific focus today is going to be the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 and its HDR gaming issue that we've been trying to get Samsung to fix since its launch on retail shelves nearly two months ago. We do have good news to share on that front in that an upcoming firmware update should resolve this issue and we'll show some test results and comparisons later to prove it, but I haven't exactly been left impressed with either the process to get it fixed or some of Samsung's continual issues with product launches. The point of this video is firstly to show what happened with the Neo G9 and the current status of that monitor, sort of an update to the review, and secondly, to give Samsung a huge public kick in the bum so that the same mistakes aren't repeated over and over again for any future products because several of their launches now have been less than impressive. I wanted to start this video off with some quick history on Samsung's dodgy quality control for monitors at launch because this goes further back than just the Odyssey Neo G9. We started to notice these problems with the Odyssey G7 that launched last year and that's when we started hearing a lot of reports from users as well. Infamously, that monitor launched with a flickering issue that plagued some use cases. Hop into the wrong game when using a variable refresh rate, and the whole screen would flicker as if there was some issue with the monitor running stably at that refresh rate. We didn't run into this issue during our generic testing, and it was a bit of a mixed occurrence among reviewers, but clearly when you hopped into a specific game or scenario and had your setup configured in a certain way, the flickering issue would rear its head on some monitors. Despite Samsung launching Odyssey G7 sales in July of 2020 and user reports of flickering beginning that same month, it took Samsung until November to address this problem through the introduction of a VRR control feature in firmware 1009.3. That's nearly four months to solve a major problem with their flagship $700 plus range of gaming monitors, which is far too long when sales are taking place throughout that time. The other issue I wanted to highlight is something that Samsung still hasn't fixed to this day, and that's a scanline issue present on the G7, original G9, and even with this new Neo G9, despite once again widespread user reports detailing the problem around the launch of the G7 and ever since. In my opinion, this is more of a niche issue than the flickering problem and certainly is an edge case. I've only ever been able to trigger it in specific test patterns or images sent through by users and not in my general gaming or productivity work on these monitors. But as I sit here today using the Neo G9 for this video, you can clearly see the problem is still present on the latest firmware despite users bringing it up over a year ago and on a previous generation product. Issues brought up on previous products should be fixed on new products or even on the original product if possible. It's that simple. The fact this still remains an issue on the Neo G9 is quite mind-blowing, and I do not believe for one second that Samsung isn't aware of it. Yes, it is an edge case. I personally don't think it's a deal breaker, and the monitor is still very usable in most situations, but we're talking about a high-end product. This is a $2,500 monitor. It's very expensive. There shouldn't be issues with edge cases. It should work flawlessly the vast majority of the time, and it should especially work all the time after the issue is reported more than a year ago. Now, I don't expect monitors to be absolutely perfect. I think that's an unrealistic goal, and I generally will overlook small edge case issues if the experience is still great 99% of the time. But with Samsung products, there's been this trend of you find one small issue, then you find another one, then you find another one, and suddenly the product has too many issues that should have been resolved before production. I didn't want to clog up this video going through all of them, the build quality problems with the first batch of Odyssey G9 units being another, one, but these events are a trend now, and it points to a lack of care and attention to detail in the quality control process. None of the issues I've talked about should be making it into retail models after appropriate quality control takes place. This brings me to the Odyssey Neo G9's HDR gaming issue, one of these small edge case issues that point to a lack of quality control in Samsung's monitor division. 
oh wait, except this isn't a small edge case at all. It's a major flaw that affects HDR gaming significantly. The entire reason you would fork out $2,500 on the Neo G9 with its 2000 zone FLD backlight and 2000 nit peak brightness capabilities. This is a continuation of those quality control problems I've been talking about that are adding up over time. Adaptive sync flickering, scan lines, build quality issues, firmware bugs, and now a broken HDR gaming experience. This shouldn't be happening. So what is the issue with HDR gaming on the Neo G9? It's quite hard to explain. But on the latest public firmware, 1006.1, the Neo G9 exhibits an issue with many games where tones are being incorrectly mapped and reproduced. This leads to a washed out experience with visually horrible mid-tones in particular, full of weird color effects and muted shadows. Despite having a full array local dimming backlight, the dimming isn't very effective with dark tones that are too high instead of being dimmed and black, along with bright highlights that aren't bright enough. It's quite obvious when playing affected titles that something is wrong, especially when you compare it to other true HDR monitors. This issue is present in both of the Neo G9's HDR modes and all of the local dimming modes. Generally speaking, the consensus in affected games is the monitor actually looks better in either the regular SDR mode or in the HDR mode with local dimming disabled. This is not how an HDR monitor is supposed to work, obviously, as HDR is meant to enhance the visuals, and this is especially possible in theory with the hardware present in the Neo G9. Bizarrely, the issue is only present and reproducible in games, and while a majority of games I've tested are affected, it's not every game. HDR video playback generally works quite well and delivers a great HDR experience, especially since Samsung corrected the tone issue in video playback that I highlighted in my original video that was fixed in firmware 1006. The issue also has varying degrees of severity depending on the game, the monitor settings, and other configuration choices. However, it's clear there is an issue and it's being reported by many users. Why is this issue occurring? Unfortunately, I can't explain that for you. I honestly don't know, and it's a bit baffling to me because monitors don't really have the capability to detect whether something is a game or a video. They're generally just a dumb device that takes an input and displays it. I've asked Samsung several times to explain what went wrong as well, and so far I haven't received an answer. So rather than speculating, this will have to remain a mystery for now. Why didn't we spot this in our initial review? Yeah, my bad on this one because yeah, I should have spotted it. Really a combination of factors here. Most of our HDR testing with gaming monitors focuses on video playback because videos, well, they tend to be more punishing on certain aspects to HDR like black levels, blooming, dimming, bright highlights, and so on. Videos tend to get darker than games and more often use the very low luminance range for shadows. So historically, they've been a better test of what an HDR display can do, especially on PC. And in the past, we haven't spotted any major differences between HDR performance in videos and games, not to the degree of the Neo G9. That's not to say we don't actually play HDR games on monitors when we test them, because we do. I just don't have time to test dozens upon dozens of games, and in this instance I wasn't playing the worst, most noticeable games with this HDR issue, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Also, in most instances, it isn't actually useful to go through and test dozens of dozens of games, so in the end I simply wasn't looking at the right examples, but then as soon as the monitor hit store shelves and buyers were playing their favourite titles, a far wider range than we could realistically test, the issue became apparent. I'm certainly not happy with myself for missing this one, even though it is quite a unique problem. After replicating this issue on our Neo G9, we did two things. Firstly, we contacted Samsung and let them know there was a major flaw with their product and pointed them to the relevant Reddit discussion and gave some of our own feedback. Secondly, we updated our review as best as we can on YouTube with comments about this HDR issue and how we don't recommend you buy it until it's fixed. This began a lengthy back and forth process with Samsung over the last six weeks, including several firmware updates and thousands of words of feedback. Our goal throughout this time was to get the problem fixed because ultimately we care about you guys, the viewers, the buyers of these products. Our job is to keep companies accountable like we've done countless times with other companies, just this time it was Samsung in our crosshairs. And the feedback we got from some of our Discord members that had bought this monitor certainly helped to pinpoint the issues and problem areas so it could be fixed properly, and we relayed many of their concerns to Samsung as well. So shout out to our Patreon and Floatplane members. Now I know some frustrated people wanted us to come out straight away and blast a new rectum into Samsung, but with these things I still want to be fair to the company and give them a chance to fix the problem first. And to their credit, Samsung did seem to want to fix the issue, though I'm not super happy with the path they took and how long it took, so I'll talk more about that later. For now, let's detail the fix. 
It took Samsung two attempts to fix the issue, at least in terms of firmware that will become public. Version 1006 was the first attempt that didn't work, but this week I was provided with a new beta firmware that has finally fixed the problem. Samsung tells me this firmware will be available as a public version before the end of the month through the Samsung website, so it'll be worth checking that out if you do own a Neo G9. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison showing the latest publicly available firmware, that's, so that's version 1006.1, and the beta firmware Samsung provided running on the same monitor in the same game with the same in-game HDR configuration. We'll run through several game examples, but the basics here is that this new version looks correct. And in comparison, the old 1006 firmware version looks wrong. It's very noticeable in a direct comparison like this, and while it may not be coming across fully in the footage, the monitor simply looks better after this new firmware update and more like what you should expect from an HDR monitor. This is being achieved through better tone mapping, better dark tones, better control in the mid-tones, and higher peak brightness levels in real gaming scenes. The FLD backlight is working more like it should, and this helps to create a much more obvious HDR experience that is far superior to SDR and clearly better than running in the HDR mode with local dimming disabled. With this latest update, you can safely run games in the auto mode without issue. Auto applies great local dimming in the HDR mode and disables local dimming for SDR use, which wasn't the case with prior updates. I should also note here that while this footage is being captured using the HDR dynamic mode, the HDR standard mode is also usable, though with a lower level of brightness. My recommendation after applying this update is to use the HDR dynamic mode with local dimming set to auto. However, this configuration is too saturated by default and quite inaccurate, so I'd also recommend tuning down the saturation level to 30 in the color controls. This improves saturation accuracy significantly, though it's still not perfect. This is how EOTF tracking shapes up between our original testing and the new beta firmware. In our original review, we pointed out this twist in the EOTF curve, where the monitor goes from being too bright to being too dark in the mid-tone region. You never want to see that, ideally the line is as flat and linear as possible. With the new firmware update, EOTF tracking still isn't ideal, and there's a noticeable bump where some values are too low. However, the monitor consistently sticks to being on the darker side of the curve, and the result is... it's okay. I recorded a more noticeable improvement to brightness. Previously, in the HDR dynamic mode, in our testing, the Neo G9 was capable of under 1000 nits sustained at most window sizes, falling to just 635 nits for a full screen white window. Only with brief flashes could the Neo exceed 1000 nits, and specifically around 10% was it capable of around 2200 nits for a short period. Now, under this new firmware update, the Neo G9 is pushing up to around 1100 nits consistently at 10% window sizes and below. Brightness is also increased for other window sizes, and sustained full screen brightness is up 11%. However, the general peak characteristics are the same, where 2000 nits is only achievable for a short time at a 10% window, which means that in practice the Neo G9 is still largely incapable of 2000 nit brightness in real world scenes. I'm yet to see the monitor actually achieve that in a game. But the biggest improvement comes in the form of real-world scene brightness and contrast in games, which reflects the results seen in a side-by-side -side comparison. In our video playback test, real scene HDR performance is only slightly improved from this new firmware, peak brightness is up 17% where we tested and contrast is up 7%, but in games the difference is massive. In our two Gears 5 test scenarios, previously the monitor wasn't pushing dark levels very low, and brightness was topping out around 540 nits in our real scene testing. This led to a limited contrast ratio of just 6000 to 1, which indicates local dimming is working, just not working very well, and the image in general is washed out. Under this new update, in the exact same scene and test points, brightness is now exceeding 800 nits for highlights, dark levels are much darker, and contrast as a result is up by over three times, reporting in at a very strong 20,000 to 1. And I should note here we aren't actually testing a full black area for our dark point, so this is the contrast between shadows and bright areas. I suspect in ideal full black conditions the Neo G9 is now going to be capable of much higher contrast than this. In Watch Dogs Legion, I also reported superior results in our test area. Brightness, where we tested, was up nearly 70% in the exact same spot, and dark levels were more than halved. This led to a massive increase in contrast for this scene, and a much more correct HDR-like image. This is with the same in-game HDR settings. Then two final spot checks of bright areas in Far Cry 5 and Doom Eternal. 
In both games, I found it very difficult to exceed 550 nits of real-world scene brightness with firmware 1006. However, this new firmware, again, we're getting 750 or even 800 nits, and that's much more common and likely. This helps to create the dazzling brights you should expect from HDR. While this update does resolve the major issues with HDR gaming and corrects the terrible HDR tones that were present previously, it's not a perfect update and there are some lingering issues that Samsung should still work on. Brightness is still too low for my liking, especially when the monitor is capable of 2000 nits of peak brightness. 2000 nits is simply not achievable in realistic conditions, and even going past 1000 nits is a bit of a stretch as we noted in our initial review. The best IPS-based G-Sync Ultimate monitors do produce higher real-world brightness in the same scenes we tested for this video, so I'd like to see Samsung increase the brightness further if possible. I suspect the current tuning is being done to minimize FALD blooming, but perhaps a local dimming mode that really focuses on high levels of brightness, especially for smaller details, is warranted given this panel should be capable of it. I still think after this update that the HDR experience is very good, but it could be better and more in line with the advertising. Scan lines are still present. This has not been fixed, and I suspect it could be a hardware issue relating to how the Neo G9 scaler deals with alternating polarities at higher refresh rates, especially 240Hz. This really needs to be fixed through a firmware update if possible, and if it's not possible, well, a future hardware revision would be required. For those with existing monitors, a compromise might be for Samsung to enable, say, a 200Hz display mode, as the scan line issue doesn't crop up anywhere near as often at lower refresh rates. The Neo G9 only has a 120 and 240Hz modes available, so 200Hz might work well here. HDR accuracy is still not great, the HDR dynamic mode is too saturated by default, though this is fixable through the OSD. Samsung should also continue to work on the EOTF curve to get it perfect, and of course I've already provided all this feedback to Samsung before the video. The final lingering issue is a new one introduced by the beta firmware I received that is another one of those classic Samsung edge cases. Basically, I experienced some backlight flickering in really dark scenes, such as below 0.1 nits, where the majority of the screen or very large portions are near black. This sounds bad, but I tested a dozen or more games and I only experienced this once, in Dirt 5, in a very specific set of circumstances, as well as one test pattern in our test software. Hopefully Samsung can fix this in the final firmware version as I let them know days ago, but I wouldn't count on it, so just be aware that this could be a problem once the firmware is available publicly. That wraps up the testing and the outcome of six weeks of back and forth discussions with Samsung and the community over the Neo G9. I'm not going to make any more videos on this monitor, I've got better things to do, but it is nice to get at least somewhat of a resolution. With that said, I've got plenty of thoughts about what has happened. Samsung's gaming monitor quality control is simply not good enough at this point and below the level it needs to be. The last year of high-end releases have seen issues slip through to retail units that should be caught during the research and development phase. Whether this is a lack of care, not having the right people on the team, not enough investment into quality control, I'm not sure. But $2,500 monitors should not be exiting the factory with deal-breaking flaws and shouldn't have flaws that are carried over from previous models. And it's not just about getting negative reviews. Shipping monitors with flaws leads to a high return rate, and we've heard from lots of people that have bought and then returned a Neo G9 because of the precise issues described in this video. It hurts confidence in the brand as well as makes people less likely to buy in the future. When issues are discovered, Samsung takes too long to fix them. The Neo G9 has been on store shelves for months, and they've been aware of this issue for over six weeks. The flickering issue with the original G7 took four months to resolve. This is not good enough for high-end products being sold to customers. Samsung were lucky that I was a bit busy working on other things and delayed this video a little because if I'd made it, say, four weeks ago, before their firmware was ready, it would have been a lot more negative. Even just communicating with the community about progress on a fix would be a good step. And that's without mentioning issues that aren't resolved at all, like the scanline issue that somehow made it through a full revision of the Odyssey G9. That shouldn't happen, that's just a lack of care in my opinion. Personally, my biggest issue with how this was handled is the reliance on us here at Hardware Unboxed. It's not our job to do product testing, bug fixing, and quality control for companies. It shouldn't take a YouTube channel of our size sending emails and making videos to get stuff fixed. Samsung should be all over this based on community feedback, which piled up quick and fast. I don't know if it would have gotten fixed anyway without our involvement, it may have, 
but the fact their first attempt at a fix didn't work, which led us to provide detailed feedback, you know, it doesn't give me great confidence in the process. I wasn't a fan of Samsung's reliance on our expertise during the process as really, they should have the right people internally to evaluate monitors and firmware updates, people even better at it than us. With that said, I am appreciative of Samsung valuing our opinion and feedback. I'm glad they didn't just dismiss the issue and sweep it under the rug. And personally, I'm glad I was able to help resolve the issue with the help of the community. We've seen other companies that like to just dismiss it, blacklist us or whatever. So I do have to give credit to Samsung there for not doing any of that stuff. But like I said, it shouldn't really come to this. There's lots of room for Samsung to improve internally and make sure things like this don't happen again. On the Neo G9 itself, based on the results of this firmware update, I can tentatively recommend the product again as the HDR experience is now as it should be. Is it perfect? No, there are still issues, but it's still usable and what I think most people buying the Neo G9 would have expected to receive. When combined with all the other elements to this monitor, like its great response time performance and motion clarity, I still think there is a lot to like here and it has some of the best HDR hardware we've seen yet in a monitor. If Samsung were unable to fix the problem within six weeks, my plan was to pull the original review, update it properly, and re-release that review with a recommendation not to buy it. That won't be necessary, but we will still provide an update comment on that video. I also want to only tentatively recommend it because people should be aware of the flaws and quality control issues present even with this latest firmware update. I would understand people avoiding the monitor due to Samsung's history and any worries over issues though. For our reviews moving forward, we'll be taking some lessons out of this as well to ensure that we don't miss issues with products like this again. This means testing more games when evaluating a monitor's HDR mode, especially games that were problematic on this monitor. I'll also be testing every monitor for pixel inversion and scanline issues. I think enough is enough when it comes to that. We're always looking to improve our reviews and we will be doing just that in the future. Anyway, that's it for the saga of the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. I think I've done enough content on this particular monitor for now. A lot of work behind the scenes to get this video up and chats with Samsung and stuff. So yeah, we'll be moving on to other things from now, but I do want to give a big shout out to our Patreon and Floatplane members who allow us to spend time working on these issues. And the feedback that we got from the community was great and very helpful for this video, but also the direct support that we get from the community allows us to sort of not really worry about you know, making videos all the time and sticking to a schedule where we're producing content every single day. The fact that we have our Patreon and Floatplane members means that we can dedicate time to making sure that these sort of things are covered properly and that we do get resolutions for issues on products that you see. So again, big thanks to the community for that one. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Subscribe for more monitor content. I'll catch you in the next one.